What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're jumping in with the weekly content roundup for Destiny 2, and this is the final reset for Season 20, so with that we have the vendor and reward refresh for May 16th, and we're going to see some big rank boosts this week, but additionally, as always, we'll cover new vendor loot, including featured weapons for the week, Ada 1's armor and shaders, plus key content changes, extra rewards, and everything else to know regarding loot this reset. And so, as always, I hope you guys enjoy the video, and if you do, be sure to get subscribed for more Destiny content, but otherwise, let's get into it. And starting out today, the first thing to mention is that we do have a booster available for Vanguard, Gambit, and Crucible, so all three of the core playlists right here will get bonus ranks all week long, so pretty useful if you're trying to catch up or unlock anything before the end of the season. Another quick shout worth mentioning right here, but the Guardian Games competitive Nightfall this week is actually Devil's Lair, so if you fancy jumping back into that strike, since it isn't featured at the moment, it could be a pretty fun one to grind, and of course, we do get that bonus to Reputation, which I assume applies in that playlist as well. So something to think about on that front. And then moving over to Niamuna, we can see the Vex Incursion Zone has moved over to Ahimsa Park, so look out for the Vex Strike Force there. On top of that, we get a new weekly mission, and this time it's Downfall, of course with the Pinnacle Drop. On top of that, for Root of Nightmares, we do have the All Hands Challenge available this week, so that's the Nezarek Challenge, and the featured weapon should be Acacia's Dejection. Then as we get on to Banshee's inventory for the week, he's got the Whispering Slab right here on the front page. This one has Quick Draw and Unrelenting. We've got Judgment of Kelgarath once again. This one has Pugilist and Wellspring. Then we've got the Cold Denial. This one's got Zen Moment and Sympathetic Arsenal. Also the Boudicca Seaside Arm. This time has Threat Detector and One for All. Then we've got the Fallen Guillotine right here, and this one's got Relentless Strikes and Counter-Attack, but these roles will change at different points throughout the week, so if you're after better roles on any of these featured weapons, it'll be worth checking in. For the second page though, we have a Raggan Hill D shotgun with Jewel Loader and Demolitionist. We also have the Jararaka 3SR Scout Rifle. This one's got 4th times the charm and gut shot straight, followed by the Vision Sidearm with Full Auto Trigger System and Elemental Capacitor. Full Auto is kind of a shame right there. But we've got the Ikelos hand cannon with offhand strike and adaptive munitions, as well as the Typhon JL5 grenade launcher. This one's got unrelenting and explosive light, certainly not the premium role, I suppose, but a decent one if you perhaps don't have any better grenade launchers. Then we've got the Marsilian C grenade launcher right here with Envious Assassin and Danger Zone this week, but once again, be sure to check in if you're after better rolls on any of these weapons, as you might just have something slightly better after one of the daily resets. Down to Shader 1 in the Annex though, this week she's got the Devastation Complex armor right here, of course we're viewing this for the Titans, but that set is available this week. I have to say, no standout stat rolls for the Titan pieces at least right here. But there are the featured shaders available this week, so initially we have the Envious Touch Shader, these are 10,000 Glimmer each, this one from back in Season of Arrivals, so maybe something to add to the collections right there. Additionally though, we have the Echoes of Io Shader, which I feel like she's sold at some point recently. But if you're after some of the older faction shaders, we do have Dead Orbit Vision available this week, and once again, these will be 10,000 Glimmer each. Finally for vendors though, moving over to the Eververse store this week, initially for 3,250 Bright Dust, we do have the Torchlight Exotic Emote available, of course a Guardian Games item in this very final week of the event. And for 2,500 Bright Dust, you can pick up the Triple Bogey Exotic Sparrow right there, a rather curious looking thing. But for 450 Bright Dust, we do have the Contender's Entrance Guardian Games Transmat effect, so maybe worth picking up in this final week. Once again, we've got the Photo Finish Shader available right here. This is the one with RGB colors, you can just make it out on the gauntlets. Be sure to pick this up if you don't already have it, as it is pretty cool. Available for 300 Bright Dust as always, and we have the Vibrant Medusa Shader available on the front page as well. But to the main Bright Dust section, for 4,250 Bright Dust, we can pick up the Gladiator Blows multiplayer emote right here, which is actually a pretty cool one, but of course very expensive. Then for 700 Bright Dust, there is the Powerlift legendary emote available, so if you fancy a little bit of a workout, this may be one to grab this week. Just be sure to keep that back straight, whatever you do. Then for 2850 Bright Dust, we have the Tug of War Ghost Shell for Guardian Games right here, with a bit of animation right there on the rope. And there is the Pistol Pose Exotic Sparrow available this week as well. That one will cost 2500 Bright Dust. Then for 2000 Bright Dust, there is the Victory's Herald Exotic Ship available. And we've got the Triumphant Weapon Ornament right here for the Heir Apparent, that is 1250 Bright Dust. 
But additionally, for 1500 Bright Dust, there is the trophy projection available this week. Then for the second page featured shaders, we once again have some older Revelry shaders, so we've got the Verdant Chrome available right here. There is also the Verdant Crown on the second page available. Once again, these are 300 Bright Dust. Then we've got the Rivalry Black Sand shader from the Guardian Games, which is a pretty nice one. And finally, there is also the Grayscale Undergrowth shader available this week. But for Transmat effects, we've got the Cherry Blossom entrance available there, as well as the AI Com Rasputin Reboot Transmat effect. 450 Bright Dust for these. And finally, there's also the Contenders entrance, which is the same as the one that is available on the front page. Just bear in mind, of course, all of these items are going to go away for at least another year after this week. So if you want to grab any of this stuff from Guardian Games, now is the time to do it. Finally right here though, let's get onto the Nightfall weapon for the week. And the featured weapon this time will be the Swarm Machine Gun. Of course this is an arc high impact frame machine gun. And so looking at the popular trait bonuses here, in the first column, Dynamic Sway Reduction, as well as Feeding Frenzy, are the two most popular bonuses, but additionally it can roll Genesis, Rangefinder, Well Rounded, or Offhand Strike. Then moving over to the second column, it is able to get Target Lock, as well as Vorpal Weapon, and then can roll Dragonfly, Golden Tricorn, Tap the Trigger, and Pugilist. And so combinations of Dynamic Sway Reduction and Target Lock in particular are really, really strong right there. And those two bonuses specifically pair really well for keeping sustained damage on the target. But Feeding Frenzy and Vorpal is pretty good as well. And I guess really the first option is better for DPS on a single target, with the next best option, Feeding Frenzy Vorpal, or Feeding Frenzy and Dragonfly, being much more focused on controlling multiple enemies and add control. So those are the two top roles right there, but let us know down below if you're still looking for a good roll of the Swarm Machine Gun. And finally, for the featured Lost Sectors this week, for today, we have exotic helmets dropping from the Thrillodrome. Then for May 17th, it'll move over to the Hydroponics Delta, dropping exotic legs. And that's followed by Gilded Precept on May 18th, dropping exotic gauntlets. Then for May 19th, we get Excavation Site, dropping exotic chest pieces. And exotic helmets once again on May 20th, dropping from Skydock. Then finally, for May 21st, we'll see the Quarry dropping exotic legs. And for today, guys, that does it for the reward and vendor roundup for the reset this week. But of course, next week, things will get a bit more interesting with the launch of Season of the Deep. So if you want to be kept up to date with all of that new content, be sure to get subscribed to the channel and I'll keep you posted as always. And for today, if you have enjoyed the video, a rating below really does help us out. Let us know if you've got any final things to get done this season before Season of the Deep drops next week. And otherwise, thank you for tuning in and I hope you guys have an awesome day.